we know Americans have different words than Irish people for a lot of things. Like, we already have established about cookies and biscuits and crisps and chips, but there are a ton more. A ton! There's an example, it's like we started already. <laughs> Shut up. Okay. This list could go on forever, so I've put it down to the 10 weirdest words that I could find. Now, Irish English is somewhere in between British English and American English. In fact, I get a lot of people in comments saying I sound American. Actually, the most common comment that I get is that she's not actually Irish, which is true. I'm not actually Irish. And this is actually a hamster. So how have I gone about choosing the top 10 weirdest words? Well, I picked the ones that make me go, Ugh. Yes, it's a very scientific way of choosing my top 10 list. But it's my list so I can do what I like. Okay, here we go. Coming in at number 10, it's the thing that goes alongside roads that people walk along. In America, they're called sidewalks. Because you walk on the side of the road. And in Britain, they call this a pavement. In Ireland, we call it a footpath. And I think that's the greatest word for it. Because you put your feet on the path. It's logical. And that's why I like it. Next, this one really gives me like... Ugh. So this thing that women cut into their hair. What do you call that? I used to have one. It's an okay look. Growing it out is a major pain in the bottom though. So three, two, one. What do you call it? We call it a fringe. In America, they call it bangs. Something about bangs makes it sound crusty. Bangs. Why are they called bangs? Is it because the hair bangs off your forehead? But that's not accurate even. Hair doesn't make that sound on skin. Let's have a quick Google. Hey Siri, are you alive? I leave that for you to decide. Can you please Google why do Americans call them bangs? Let's see. Here's what I found on the web for why do Americans call them bangs. Here we go. The word bang tail is defined in the OED as a horse's tail of which the hair is allowed to grow a considerable length and then cut horizontally across so as to form a flat, even tassel-like end. Well, that's a less interesting answer than I'd hoped for. Oh God, don't break your phone for comedy. Don't break your phone for comedy. Next up, what's the dot at the end of your sentence called? In Ireland, we call it a full stop because the sentence has come to a full stop. In America, they call it a period, which means a different thing here. And every time I hear it in American TV shows, it makes me go, whoa. It just has a different connotation. And on that one, I'm gonna say full stop is a better word. And then there's number seven. Well, I mean, it could be two number sevens, who knows? A lot of times I get my numbers wrong on these lists and you guys tell me about it in the comments. It's fine, I'm totally aware that I don't know how to count to 10, which is ironic given that this channel is largely based on top 10 lists. I can't count, okay? So number seven-ish. What's that thing you put on when you're cold and you you put it on, I'm trying not to give away the words, and it's, it's long sleeves and potentially a round neck, could be a v-neck, maybe a hood, and it keeps you warm, but it's not a coat. What do you call it? If you said jumper, you're Irish. If you said sweater, you're American. And if you said pullover, you're British. Probably, I'm sure a lot of people will correct me in the comments and say that they say another thing. So I gotta ask America, is it because when you're wearing it, you get real sweaty? According to Google, it's because they were designed to reduce sweat, but surely they induce sweat. Hmm. I don't know why we call them jumpers, but basically it's a fun word to say, isn't it? And sweaters is like, and pullovers is like clinical. Okay, the next one, I'm a little vague on its use, so I'm just gonna jump right in. It's the word napkin. And I think Americans use the word napkin for like babies nappies or diapers hey that's another word and also ladies sanitary items but to us a napkin is what you dab your face with after you eat food and we just call the lady items sanitary towels so i'm a little unclear on that one but yeah next up it's the word for the running shoe that you put on your feet in America, they're called sneakers, and also, I think, trainers. But sneakers fascinates me, because in Ireland, we call them runners. Now, again, that seems like an incredibly 
logical thing to call them because you're gonna go running in them so you put on your runners and you go for a run or you put on your runners and you go for a sit and watch netflix for five hours binge sneakers implies you're going to do some kind of illegal activity which is generally frowned upon so the term sneakers is quite funny because it has strange connotations runners all the way and then there's this thing what do you call that Ding, 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 Bleh. I don't know. In Ireland, we call that a zebra crossing because it looks like a zebra. And in America, you guys call it a crosswalk because you walk across it. Both words, I think, work on a good level. The American version is very logical and explains exactly what it means to perhaps non-English speakers. But the Irish version is just cute. So next time you see one in America, call it a zebra crossing. Also, you guys probably say zebra, which makes this one work on a lot of different levels. You know, it's multifaceted. Oh my God, shut up. This next one, I'm gonna give it to the Americans. It's a pacifier, according to Americans, because it pacifies babies when they put it in their mouth. In Ireland, we have a few different names for it. I guess the more proper name would be soother, but we tend to call them doties because babies can say doties, so they can ask for their doties. But as a grown up, pacifier is a better word, really. Up next, we have one that really confused me initially when I used to see it in American films. It's when you're in a restaurant and you ask for the whiskey. No, the thing that tells you how much you have to pay. In Ireland, we call it the bill. And in America, you guys call it the check. But in Ireland, you can write and cash a check, which you also have in America, but it's spelt differently. And you see where my confusion comes about? I think we should all just agree to do this when we want it. Because that's the universal language. And number one, weird word that Americans use that we don't use in Ireland, that we use a different name for working title. What are those? Not Ned Jake Paul, but I just, what are those? Well, in America, you might call them pants. Let's try that again. Pants. One more time. Pants. And that has no doubt caused some hilarious confusion. But in Ireland, it refers to your undergarments that you wear for your downstairs area. We call them trousers or jeans or trues, I guess. Nobody says trues, Diane. What the hell are you talking about? So yes, that was my top 10 list of weird words. There are lots more weird words. Let me know in the comments below what weird words you know that are different in Ireland and America. And feel free to engage with one another in the comments in a respectful way. Oh, sir, I disagree with you. That's quite all right, sir. Well done, sir. That was an example of being respectful. I'm really close to hitting 50K. And when I do, I'm going to do a live stream and I'll announce it on my Twitter and my Instagram. So... Do head on over there if you want to find out when my first ever live stream is gonna be. Wouldn't it be really bad if a year from now I was still like stuck hovering between 49 and 50 and this video was still there for prosperity and I just looked like a big dork. Let's hope that doesn't happen. And bye. Sound rolling, camera rolling, lights are on, hair is, it's okay. So how I, so, so but it's my list so I can do what I like. We call it a fringe in America. Oh hi. So let me know in the comments below what weirds you weirds. Free to engage with one another. Airplane. Yeah, take your time there, airplane. It's totally fine. We have all the time in the world. Like seriously, is it just hovering above my house? Do airplanes hover or is that just helicopters? Go away! Imagine if I figured out this was the apocalypse and um, that's how I figured it out. Seriously, it's been about five minutes. Um, yeah, so I checked. It turns out it's actually my neighbour doing some DIY on her door right outside. So we're just going to put some plinky plunky music under the video or something. Oh, hi. Are you going to make noise too? Hi. Oh. Hi. 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 Today we're gonna do one of the. Oh, am I boring you? Sorry. I think Chewy now associates the end of the video with us going to the park. What was that word? To the park. 
you want to go to the park.